The COVID-19 pandemic continues to challenge students, adding social and financial hardship for many. As Texas Wesleyan celebrates Black History Month, we take a walk down history lane to bring you details about Black students and how they became part of the Wesleyan community. Coming up on Rambler TV. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Nita Dima and welcome to today's newscast. The COVID-19 pandemic has, called many, has caused many hardships for individuals. Students have been faced with the possibility of deregistration due to financial problems. While only one student was deregistered this semester, many felt stressed by it. Some worried they may be unable to continue with their classes this semester. Reporter Felipe Parra has the story. COVID-19 has affected people all around the world, and students from Texas Wesleyan are not the exception. Due to this, deregistration has happened with one student from Texas Wesleyan. Other students express their opinions and thoughts about deregistration. Um, I think that uh, deregistration is really bad for the students, especially nowadays, because students have to like um, have a lot of chances to study because uh, most of them cannot afford this. When uh, we are going through such a hard time with this pandemic, um, I think it should be more of an understanding period with students who are actually here to get an education. Um, I feel like students should be able to go to classes even though not all students now have the opportunity to get all the money they need because of COVID. They lost jobs, they lost homes, they need help. So it's bad because like they have to understand the situation of the students that they cannot pay like the full but they can just pay the, uh, an amount. Texas Wesleyan has helped students with deregistration with understanding and support also. Some students see the positive side of all of this. Um, I think it's great that they're opening the scholarships for the student. Um, it's kind of sad that they got kicked out due to a worldwide pandemic. Um, we need to be better prepared for it. It, it can be the motivation to study hard and uh, like uh, study hard, uh, take an internship and this kind of things. A lot of effort and sacrifice both students and Texas Wesleyan are making sure that no more students suffer from deregistration. This was Felipe Parra for The Rambler. Thank you, Felipe, for the story. Still reporting on the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, students expressed social loss. Student organizations that were once the buzz of campus life have had to quiet down in adherence to CDC guidelines. Many organization events moved from in-person to virtual. Some students claim that the virtual events take away from the entire college experience, especially their ability to make friends. Some organization representatives share their thoughts. Here's the story. The unexpected impact of COVID-19 has disrupted daily life for everyone in the past year. One campus experience that has been affected is student organizations. So before COVID, I would argue that I was more involved just because there were more events that, you know, were being held that I could attend. Um, but yeah, I was pretty active before. Texas Wesleyan currently has 38 student organizations ranging, ranging from sororities to clubs like Entrepreneurship Club. The list of organizations can be found on the Ram Space website. Um, I'm a member at large at SGA. I'm the treasurer of PAC. Um, I'm in Gay Straight Alliance. I'm the president of my sorority, Alpha Z Delta. I'm in the diversity and inclusion subcommittee for the university. I'm in a few other things as well. There's just a few. However, these new social distancing norms does not prevent these organizations from flourishing. Even with the organizations that have fewer numbers, um, we still stuck to a virtual format for the most part, just out of com comfortability um, for all of the members. A lot of girls or, you know, members in general just didn't feel comfortable meeting up when things first struck because, you know, it's a safety thing. We want to take safety in consideration. That is absolutely, without a doubt, the first priority. Um, and we don't want anyone to feel pressured to come to an in-person event, like they're missing out or anything. Um, so for the most part, things have stayed pretty virtual. Um, the school has also, you know, set that expectation that we do follow all CDC regulations. 
New students to campus may be a little disappointed that campus life isn't as lively, but they are hopeful that in-person events will start again soon. I'm, I'm from Oklahoma, so uh, it was going to be like a pretty big change. You know, it's a, it's a lot bigger city. Um, I would have been able to meet a lot of different people, but you know, it's okay for right now. As soon as we get, you know, a vaccination or um, you know, confirmation that Corona is gone, um, we'll be able to get back to our normal lives, and it'll be nice. Vita Dima reporting for Rambler TV. Although the pandemic may have affected campus student activities, Theater Westland continues to produce. Theater Westland has found a way to represent the effects of the pandemic in a new play, Uncle Vanya. Students adopt the way the students adopt new ways to rehearse while following CDC guidelines. The production team shares their thoughts. Reporter Tatiana Ginnings with the story. From the moment the Professor and his spouse came here to live, our lives have been knocked smack out of kilter. Theater Westland presents Uncle Vanya, a play about frustration that takes place in a provincial community in Russia in 1896, written by Anton Chekhov. We spoke with director and associate professor of theater, Dr. Jean Everton, and she said she chose Uncle Vanya because it relates to today's situation with COVID-19. tell you that part of the reason I chose to do it now is that many of the situations that turn up in this play are very similar to what has happened to all of us when our uninvited visitor, COVID-19, up set our routine of life and we've all had to make adjustments. Speaking of adjustments, we spoke with theater major Jonathan Burt and he discussed with us how he gets into his character of the professor, a well-educated older man. In becoming the professor, it is, there are a few things that I have to do. First is a physical change in, in being that I have to walk with a cane and Character-wise, he, you have to focus on his pride. Getting into these characters were not easy due to the COVID-19 guidelines. Theater major Bethany Borderlon shares how the challenges taught them a new way to express their character's feelings. Instead of having any type of physical contact, no, um, we and having masks on stage, we're having to adapt in a way where we show our emotions and what we're feeling through our bodies instead of um, our facial expressions and even our voice. Um, so finding out different techniques to like really uh, draw out the emotion in the scene, uh, but through our bodies has definitely been a challenge. The cast claims that they have worked harder on this production than any others due to COVID-19 restrictions. This is Tatiana Giddings for Rambler TV. Thank you, Tatiana, for the story. It's great to see the theater students at work, even in the face of the pandemic challenges and hardships. We all look forward to the play. Speaking of overcoming challenges, Texas Wesleyan celebrates Black History Month. Rambler TV's Christian Gaffner captures Black history at Texas Wesleyan and the movement towards Black student integration on campus in the 50s and 60s. Texas Wesleyan University has celebrated Black History Month for decades, though when it first began sometime in the 1970s, the celebration of Black culture and history only lasted a week. Today, Texas Wesleyan has a very diverse student population, and that diversity is continuously trending upwards. Having a very diverse population now makes it easier and more important to represent certain cultures' histories. We were interested in finding the first black student to attend Texas Wesleyan. So we were looking at the library for some kind of archive of students, where I did find a section dedicated to black history, but not much else. There is an online archive with huge amounts of old editions of the Rambler, some even dating back to the early 1900s. I searched using various terms, eventually realizing that to find what I'm looking for, I would have to use some outdated terms that were used during that time. I began searching for mentions of segregation and integration, but mostly found articles written about other schools and their struggles for or against integration. On the other hand, there were articles written about the more philosophical side of things, discussing themes of brotherhood and traditions, but nothing concrete about actual integration or the first black students being admitted to Texas Wesleyan. Eventually, we did find a relevant piece of information that helped in the search. 
or at least established a benchmark in Texas Wesleyan's stance on integration at that particular point in time. Basically, the article discusses an interracial conference that was attempting to hold a meeting on campus. The conference was declined, stating that it might not set so well with some of the supporters of the college. At this point in time, the school's financial backing had priority over the integration situation. To give some credit to the 1956 editors of The Rambler, the author of the article does go on to address the ethics of the situation, asking, should we allow money to come between us and the opportunity for educating a human being? We began seeing articles about student opinions on integration happening at Texas Wesleyan, and the number of pro-integration students was seemingly rising at each mention of the idea. Narrowing down the window of Texas Wesleyan's integration even further, a December 1960 edition of The Rambler included the results of an on-campus poll which asked about whether Texas Wesleyan should be integrated. The results of that poll determined that students were split about 50-50 on the subject of integration. Continuing through the 1960s editions of The Rambler, eventually there was a switch from discussing integration on campus to articles mentioning black students at Texas Wesleyan. Nothing about the day integration happened, or an article naming the first students admitted, but a sudden switch to integrated life and classes. From what can be gathered from these time capsule of news, once integration happened, the Texas Wesleyan community was seemingly accepting the black students and in support of civil rights causes. Black history and culture classes were being added to the curriculum, and black students were asked if they felt fully represented. Beginning in the early 70s, black history, besides being taught in classes, began being celebrated. Theater productions, dances, and events were put on in honor of black history. This became a tradition nationwide, and Texas Wesleyan always took part in it. In 1987, Jubilee Theater moved from its original location to 3114 East Rosedale, right across from Texas Wesleyan's campus. Jubilee Theater was the first major presence of black theater in North Texas. Texas Wesleyan's theater program worked with and performed at Jubilee Theater on multiple occasions. In 1993, Jubilee Theater moved to downtown Fort Worth in Sundance Square, and it's still active and putting on performances today. In the 1990s, Black History Month became closer to what it is now, and is celebrated for the whole month of February. Finally, in a 1998 edition of The Rambler, we found something close to what was being looked for. The first black graduate of Texas Wesleyan, Dr. Beatrice Douglas. She graduated in 1966 and remained involved with the school, serving on the Board of Alumni for Texas Wesleyan for years. In the present, Texas Wesleyan does a great job with representation in general, and the celebrating of Black History Month, it doesn't just feel like it's being done to appease people. A lot of thought is put into events held over the course of the month, and people are given voices that wouldn't have been able to speak in the past. Thank you so much for joining us in today's newscast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at The Rambler and on Twitter and Instagram at The Rambler TWU. My name is Vita Dima and this is The Rambler. Rambler TV.